I love conversations, human stories. There is an error. Why? No error, please. Okay. <laughs> I am live. Hello and good afternoon from Thailand. This is Ava Wanamakog, and you are watching the You Are Able video series. And this series is where I invite guests from all walks of life. Um, most of the people, of course, are people who are based in Thailand, but not necessarily. And uh, people who are showcasing an aspect of themselves where I call, you know, becoming or, you know, being able to do something. Um, because this is not specifically a task oriented, uh, you know, action. It's not like I'm able to do this. Sometimes it's just the courage, uh, the ability to speak up and share your truth and your courage. And that's why I call it You Are Able, which is very, very broad. And today I'm very, very happy to meet, to invite all of you to meet Mika, who is the creative director and actually she's the owner of the Siamese Dream Loungewear. Welcome. Hi. Hello, Saudika. Hi, Abel. Thanks for having me. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. I'm very happy to, you know, have you. I remember we spoke a long time ago when you had a video shoot or yeah, you had a modeling shoot of your loungewear at my laundromat. It was I a while did. back. It was, it was a while back, but it was a really memorable shoot. And yeah, thank you yeah. for allowing us to use your laundromat. It was really a perfect oh. background. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought that was so cool. I mean, like a laundromat is not a sex place, but you somehow made it look really sexy and very stylish and fashionable and i recommend um everybody who's watching this they probably already know that you do the siamese dream loungewear but for those of you who are you know my audience you know please go and take a look at uh, mika and what she does so mika i'll let you introduce yourself a little bit more uh perhaps what you do or you know what you're passionate about before we get into the cultivating of joy topic today right um yeah so my name is mika um i live in phuket I've been here since 2014. We split our time between here and the UK. Um, I work in design and product development. And uh, previously, in my previous life and career, I've worked in uh, fashion and retail and um, developing products. And I think that's always been my my interest is, is the design process, um, being inspired, right. and developing things and yeah, so when we moved to Phuket, I was obviously, my daughter was quite young and I worked part time in, I guess, freelancing for other brands. And then eventually I just had this little, I guess this little voice inside me that's just kept pushing me to say, okay, it's time to do your own thing. You're always working with other people. So eventually, I guess I found the courage to create something of my own. And then that's um, where the idea of Siamese dreams came about. Um, it was basically being inspired by Thailand, but also being inspired um, by the life we live at home rather than, you know, going out. And I suppose I am a bit of an introvert. I do enjoy being at home. I do en enjoy, you know, those, the rituals of work. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so it was just, and it, make, it made sense to me to create a product driven, um, a textile driven product range um, based in Thailand and I from as far as I could I couldn't find anyone else doing that specifically so I also thought okay it's a sign I should do it and yeah that's where I'm at today so I I enjoy like I said the creative process I enjoy um, working and collaborating with different artists specifically women and mm. I enjoy collaborating with women also to create the photo shoots and to create content so I guess it's this constant um, process of, of development of ideas of creation and it's just making something and putting it out there. So I enjoy that process and I, and I like the collaborative side of, of the creative process. Yeah. I um, learned something from you as well, the way you work with a lot of local Thai women, um, not actually local Thai women, excuse me, uh, local expats and even Thai who live in Phuket, uh, because this is one of the markets that I do not approach. One of my markets as a presenter are all foreigners who are not from Thailand. And so I feel in a way very detached from the local community because I'm also now 
Uh, I was like a, a little bit of an extrovert when I was in college, but now I am fully an introvert. And um, I think Eka was the one who said that I was a hermit and I don't go out. <laughs> and um, I enjoy my time alone. <laughs> Sorry? She definitely calls me a hermit as well. So oh, yeah. We can have our own hermit crew. We can be like a hermit right, crew. Right, <laughs> hermit crew. And, um, but I... I I'm also a very creative person. And when I saw you collaborating with a lot of the Thai ladies, I thought, how smart, you know, they are your clients and you are, you know, they're helping you, you're helping them. They're wearing your, you know, luxury um, sleepwear and loungewear and they look amazing. Even though I know some of them are definitely not professional models, but somehow they look really, really good um, in your photo shoots. So I think it's really, really good what you're doing. And I, always enjoy meeting people who are like-minded um mm -hmm. especially people who are working women uh, yeah. i tend to i tend to i guess mix easier with people who work than people who don't work um it's just somehow it just kind of uh kind of like my energy i guess yeah well i think yeah i agree with you i think i'm also inspired by people who are for lack of a better word, ambitious or who are driven by goals. And it I don't, it doesn't necessarily have to be a financial goal. Like for me, it's just about, I'm inspired by people who are working on themselves, bettering themselves, creating things, building things. Um, right. And that can also mean families, you know, like some women are just, just amazing at like managing their, their families. And, you know, it's not necessarily a, a financial or profit driven um, thing that I, that I am inspired by, but I'm inspired by a lot of things or how people, you know, build their homes or how they express themselves or, you know, how they write poetry or whatever it is, like just whatever your, whatever your talent is, it's up to you to, to find that. And then once you find it, then it's also your duty to share that with the world. And then once you share it with the right. world, then you can inspire others and then they can be inspired. And, and that's what it's about. It's about, I think for me, more the more i think about it the most important thing that i want to feel and i look for in other people is being inspired um it's an energy it's it's like a curiosity it's like people that are you know they're open to life and they're open to growth you know i think those yeah. are the main the main ingredients of like oh what's what's interesting or who makes someone worth watching or listening to in my opinion and yeah and i love working with women around me and I said I think for me it was also a personal goal because I'm such a hermit and introverted I I forced myself into creating I suppose this brand so that I had an excuse to like to get out there and to reach out, and to reach out <laughs> okay. to women and be like right. okay here's my like I don't know excuse to work with people and meet these women because and for right. me it wasn't about like sure you have friends all over the world and you can you can connect you know with with people all over but more and more as I started to reflect on what are the, the values I want to live by and also the brand values was to promote local. And, and the more I said it, the more I had to start practicing what I was preaching. So it wasn't about using international models. It was about using what's available here. And, and I was blown away because there's so many amazing, gorgeous, interesting women from different ages, different backgrounds. And I think it's important as a brand too, that we're not just um, showcasing like gorgeous, you know, models, which, which I love to do because it, there's also an art form behind that, you know, like creating beautiful images and having a, a model who knows how to work her angles. And it just, there's a certain art artistry behind it and there's, there's a craft. So I respect that craft and you do get beautiful images and they're aspirational, but at the same time, there's at the end of the day, who is your customer? Who is buying your clothes? Who's wearing it? So that mm -hmm. story is also important to tell. And I love, you know, using that story and using women that are here, that inspire me, that live here. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's it's been a, it's been a journey and it's been fun and I enjoy it. So, yeah, I think at the end of the day, you have to do what you love and, for, you know, what you enjoy. And um, I see and hear the passion within you. And I also remember enjoying our conversation last time that we were briefly at the my laundromat and um how what a deep thinker you are actually and i enjoy conversations with people uh obviously everybody pretty much knows my background 
um, my, my whole career is from public speaking and from mass communication and broadcast media. And this is what I love. Uh, it's my passion and my purpose to speak up, to share, to learn from other people, because when I'm learning from you, I'm healing also, because I also have a lot of you know issues in the past that I'm trying to work on to grow yeah. myself. Otherwise, yeah. I cannot call myself a, you know, from being an international presenter or a speaker to being a coach now. So I actually have to have worked on myself before I can do what I do. And you have worked, you know, with other people for so long in the fashion industry before you, you know, now decided, you know what, I don't need to work for anybody else anymore. I'm talented and you have all these dreams and creativity and you want to create something for yourself. And so why not? Right. At the end of yeah. the day, that's if, if that's what makes you happy, then then do it. So let's go straight into the questions. And um, of course, we don't always follow the questions that I have given to Mika, like, you know, exact because I'm the kind of go with the flow kind of person. And I know that our past always influences our present moment because yeah. we all have history. And my first question is to, you know, ask you, OK, the, po the topic that you chose, you know, cultivating joy in everyday life what happened to you in your past that made you choose this specific title and to talk about joy today i think what the first thing that popped into my mind when i saw that question was i think it was the most recent thing like life-changing event has been the pandemic and then that completely shifted how we lived our daily lives and everything was brought into question so immediately these past two and a half years have been a huge shift in how we all live our daily lives and how we all, you know, how we work, where we work and uh, what we do and what we don't do and our restriction to travel and the world as we knew it then, like I was caught, we were constantly traveling. Um, you know, it was, it was a very different world, you know, and we, yeah. and that changed, like literally it changed overnight and we weren't able to do any of those things. All of a sudden you're, you're like stuck in your home with your, yeah. you know, and even relationships were so, it was, it was challenging because, you know, I, both me and my husband were not used to being together like 24 seven. And then also homeschooling, cooking, cleaning, like doing, oh, yeah. doing literally everything. So it was an adjustment, but also at the end of the day, we luckily we did realize that we did enjoy each other's company and we were grateful for <laughs> the family that we had That's and we good. were grateful grateful for the home that we we had built together and it just we were really grateful and and we recognized you know that that was a privilege of ours living on a beautiful island like we were mm -hmm. still able to you know look out the window and you see beautiful nature and birds and flowers yeah. and and then I just right. you know more and more I started to really self reflect and to really assess what was important and what was not important and I guess it was that you know what brings you joy on a daily basis is what's important in your lives. It's not about, you know, I, I call this like the vacation versus your daily life. So some people, you know, they work really hard and then they have like, you know, two weeks, a month off a year, and that's when they get to truly experience joy. But the rest of the time they're like miserable. Yeah. And da, 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 da. So yeah. that's also one of the reasons why we wanted to move to Phuket is because it was one of our favorite places to go on holiday. Um, but we wanted to somehow incorporate that backdrop into our daily lives. Not to say that we were just going to sit around and do nothing and go to the beach all day. No, but it does help, you know, the environment that you're surrounded with absolutely helps with your day to day mm -hmm. joy. And I don't make, I'm not making a point where everything has to be glamorous or expensive because it doesn't actually, it's the small, small moments and pockets of joy that I find the most rewarding. It's like those little tiny moments in your daily life. So, Again, pajamas for me, it's a daily, it's a daily routine to wear pajamas to sleep. Well, for me anyways. And then why not have like fun, colorful, joyful prints rather than just like a boring, you know, plain kind of color. So for me, that was one way to create joy. And another thing uh -huh. is like how you drink your cup of coffee or your, you know, do you have a favorite mug or do you have a favorite cup or, you know, do you have a plant that really just for no other reason that you just enjoy looking at and you're just in awe of and it could, could be so many small things and it's again it's not it's not meant to be massive things that bring you joy for me joy is just those little things that spark awe right. or 
inspire you. So yeah, I guess it's just the pandemic really made me reshift. Um, it wasn't about big moments. It wasn't about holidays. It wasn't about extravagance. It's actually, okay, how do I maintain my mental health in, in, in like an everyday scenario? So it's finding these little pockets of peace and pockets of joy. And so that's what really sparked a huge shift, I think, in, in actively looking for the joy in, this, in the everyday. So, yeah. I think kind that of. is um, a wonderful shift because especially, I mean, I, my background is uh, America and Hong Kong, right? And those cultures taught me to chase, chase yeah. the outer things for the longest time. That's what I did because I thought that I was taught that. I was taught yeah. in university. I was taught that by television. I was indirectly taught that from observing my parents and how they work and their work ethics. Yeah. And um, I enjoy working, but I was also working to seek outer success, praise, yeah. um, a certain level of uh, recognition because I felt like I wasn't receiving the recognition that I wanted to receive. And when you keep chasing, these things in your life, it it's the rat race, right? Everybody calls it the rat race. There's the employee rat race. There's the entrepreneur rat race. There's all kinds of rat races, right? As soon yeah. as you are chasing something, whether you're chasing this hot girl or this hot guy or this nice car or these bags or this house or this job or this title or whatever it is that is outside of yourself, it will yeah. never end because your goals no. will continue to it will continue to shift, right? Absolutely, they, they they'll and, be replaced then, by bigger goals, and it's an exactly. endless pursuit. It's like a, what do the Buddhists call it? It's like drinking salty water with expecting to quench your thirst. It'll never <laughs> be quenched. Yeah, you know. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. I I also learned a lot of really great philosophical quotes from being in this country in Thailand, and. Yeah. This country taught me so much about being grounded and being humble and um, having patience. And, mm. you know, all of these things actually made me more joyful as yeah. well, you know, the, the mindset. But I appreciate because you say that you're an introvert and that you like to stay at home. And now it really makes sense for you to think about, okay, like pajama wear and like i just never like think about you know that and and i just thought okay intro okay that's cool that's cool that's interesting very interesting um because uh i never really enjoyed staying at home that much before covid <laughs> like i i really need my outside like i have to go yeah. out at least yeah. once a day um but yeah life has definitely shifted now what is the difference? And I know I know this from obviously my learning uh, of um, the philosophy of Buddhism in Thailand. There's a difference between happiness and joy. And I want to ask you, what is your definition of happiness compared to joy? Um, for me, the simplest way is that happiness is dependent on an outcome, whereas joy is simply in and of it, in and of itself, you know, you're not expecting an outcome or a result. Joy is just joy can be like a fresh cut flower, you know, and joy could be, you know, um, waking up and the sun is shining. It's just, it's, it's not about a result. It's not about an ending. It's just in that moment of an appreciation of, of, of awe or beauty or inspiration. Yeah. So Whereas happiness is dependent on an outcome, you know, happiness is dependent on a circumstance. Right. Right. Yeah. So joy is like a, an energy and it's, yeah. it's, yeah. So it's just a state of being. Um, so yeah, joy is, is just an, an, yeah, it's an energy. It's a state of being, it's an attitude. It's not, it's not dependent of, of as a result of something. I love that. Uh, it's very simple. To understand, yeah. you know, for the audience as well. I remember reading uh, Eckhart Tolle. I, I think that's how you say his last name, T-O-L-L-E. Uh, I consider him, you know, like my spiritual teacher as well. I love a lot of his books. And um, he was saying that anything that has an opposite, you know, like black and white, sad and mm -hmm. happiness, 
uh, anything that has an opposite is not coming from within you. Um, mm -hmm. And then, it, and then you know, now what you're saying totally makes you know additional sense as well, um, because joy and peace, he said, do not need an opposite. It's just there. It's being it's really, right. It, it's just yeah. a present. It's a present awareness, right? right? So when you're in joy, right. or when you experience joy, it's just. It will com completely linked to that present moment, whatever it is right. that you're experiencing. So you're right. right. It doesn't have an opposite. It's not, whereas happiness would be like, I'm only happy because I right. just got a raise or I just got this car or this person loves me. So happiness yeah. is linked to an external cause that can be taken away. Hence, it does have an opposite. So it is, right. it's a fleeting thing, whereas joy is not. It's like completely being present, you know, being in admiration, being in awe being inspired right. like those are completely linked to the present moment so i uh, yeah that's really interesting actually I, I didn't think of it like that but you're right it doesn't have an opposite it's just it's in the awareness of now yeah it's it's really amazing how when you read books uh, it totally expands your mind and uh that they're not originate from me okay <laughs> so i was just quoting i was just quoting him um but you know it is uh deeply absorbed and and it is learned I remember one of my deepest moments of joy was when my husband was playing with my kids and they were on a river uh, with lots of rocks. So it's not like a deep river. It was just like a floating, you know, like river flowing through rocks and it was mm. completely nature. So, you know, the simplest things are the most beautiful because this is not a hotel. This is not anything. It's just a, a river and they were playing. Mm. And I remember it was just, it was like the sun was shining on them. It, it was like yeah. so perfect. There's trees, uh, you know, be, between us and like a forest. And I was just observing them. And I started crying from just watching <laughs> my husband play with my Beautiful. kids. Mm -hmm. And yeah, because I, I, at that moment, I was only there. There was, there was yeah. nothing else. And there was only a few times in my life, usually when I'm on stage, I feel like this, when I'm totally, totally present. That's one of the reasons why I love being on stage. Um, it's almost like forces me into a moment of presence. Um, yeah. You know, when, when I'm not med meditating or doing yoga, but that moment when I was watching my, my husband and my kids, it was perfect. It was, everything was perfect. The warmth, the sun, the sky, the, the presence of my, 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 my kids. And there was no worry at all. And that was to me, true joy. It was so yeah. amazing. Yeah. I wish no, I that's could. Beautiful. No, but I mean, the exactly what you described is all those things are linked to joy. It being in nature, um, yeah. the act of play, because play doesn't have um, um, a need to have a result. It's just being playful it's, there. You know, yeah. it's not goal it's not goal oriented you know when you're just frolicking right. or playing it's just for the joy of playing you know like so right. all those moments your family and i guess there's these these beautiful love relationships and yeah, yeah. that is joy so those are the moments yeah. that we'll remember forever actually those what those are what are going to sustain us and create those long lasting memories it's all those simple things you know and it's watching mm -hmm. a sunset it's not for any other reason than to watch a sunset. It's because it's yeah. beautiful. And it just yeah. links you to the awe of Mother Nature or, you know, right. stargazing or, or you know, taking a beach walk or, you know, going for a hike. There's, you know, that you, you might get other things from it, but ultimately you're doing it because it's there's joy in it. And it's like a reverence in a way to Mother Nature and, and to the elements yeah. and in awe of it all. Yeah. Right. And I think you already answered the third question, which is how do you, you know, um, cultivate joy in your everyday life? And I wanted to remind the viewers, too, especially the um, people who do not necessarily have to have any ambition in, in their lives um, or the people who have to work in their lives. Uh, I, yeah. I have to work. <laughs> I, I definitely have to work and I enjoy my work. Um, and but I find joy in work as well. Um, I yeah. wanted to remind people that whether you need to work or you don't need to work, you have to try to find why you're in that present moment, like why you're there. 
And, yeah. and I think a lot of people, you know, they think, well, I, I have a job, you know, like I, I, I'm getting paid. Yeah, that's good. So what if you get fired? You know, like there's a lot of things. And I always encourage people to become entrepreneurs instead of being an employee. Because if you are able to, if you are a creator, we're all meant to be creators. I think that if you if you are able and given the opportunity to, and a lot of times it's within your head, I, I guess, you know, what you think you can do um, yeah. to link your ability to the service needed by the public yeah. or yeah. by the general, you know, people, um, then there's a higher chance for you to have freedom. Yes. And I believe freedom in many aspects, obviously, emotional freedom is the most important. Physical freedom, which is your health. And then there is, um, you know, financial freedom as well is very important. You do not need to be a millionaire, but uh, to be able to, you know, pay for all the things that you need to pay and to see the doctor if you need to. I believe freedom is linked to joy in, in, in many ways. What do you think about that? Well, I think they're definitely connected. And I think that all those things create better conditions so that you're more programmed mm -hmm. to find the joy in your life. But right. I think it's, like you said, whether you, you have to work or not is, is, is irrelevant to you actively looking for joy in your daily lives. It could be you mm. can find joy. In, and I think the idea is to, to program your mind to look for joy. And I think right. and it's and it's finding joy in your simple things, like whether it's like, again, like you're in, in small daily things, like, is it your favorite shirt, your favorite cup, or is it, you know, maybe you get your, you treat yourself to right. some fresh flowers every week, or, right. you know, there's a song that you just brings you joy and you just dance and you just do your silly dance by yourself. Like those are right. all moments of joy that you can create regardless of your working conditions you know, or maybe it's like, I really, I love stationery. So sometimes I'm like, Ooh, I have my favorite pen or have my favorite yeah. like, paper book or whatever it is. Yeah. It's like, sometimes it's just finding joy in, in, yeah. in whatever that sparks joy within you. You know, sometimes it's a hobby yeah. or whatever it is like do something right. that creates pressure. And that's not just for, you know, some other purpose, you know, it's not, it's not directly linked to, 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 you know, to getting somewhere or doing something. It's just, it's just joy. Like do something every day, like whether it's, and usually it is small. It's small things that that create the yeah. most joy, I think. And then the more you do it, the easier it is to start spotting the joy. Right. So you can, you know, you just you can find it in nature. That's the easiest one. But you know, finding it in your home and or is there a photo that brings you joy? Print it and put it in your wall or put it somewhere that's like you're gonna pass every single day. Or is it an artwork? Or is it like a, a memory? Um, so yeah, all those things are irrelevant of, of your in a way your financial situation i mean sure it helps to have less worries when you're in a good right. state financially and you're right. but that's also a constant thing like i think you know we're all on this journey to better ourselves hopefully and we're all kind of leveling up and and i also think that comes with age and experience i think you know the older you are the more confidence you get and your in your belief in yourself so i was you know at the end of my thirties before I even considered starting my own thing. And I think that took, it took like a couple of decades of, you know, working for other people to really fully, I guess, get the experience and, and build up my confidence and build up my skills before I was able to take that leap. So yeah, I, I think given the opportunity, yeah, it'd be great. Everyone should try being an entrepreneur or at least build their own small little business. You know, it doesn't right. have to be your full time job, but if you create something of your own, there is, it's not just a financial satisfaction, but it's, you know, it's a, like a, an emotional and, and sort of a mental satisfaction that you, you can create something, you can build something, you know, there's, right. for me, that's worth more than money in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree with you. Um, and you already answered the last two questions, so I'm not going to ask them. Um, <laughs> And you gave so much advice already to to the audience on how to find joy. And it's always the little things, I think, um, because you can't always keep seeking or waiting for that big vacation or that yeah. big gift or or for your husband or your wife to like do something 
to satisfy yeah. you. The the feeling of fulfillment and joy. Um, I think I find it in in many different ways. I think nature is the easiest because I don't have to create it. It's just there, yeah, okay. and yeah, it's just there. And like eating is joy to me. Absolutely. I love I love food. <laughs> it's me too it brings a lot yeah. of joy it's, it's yeah. a pleasure it's a joy it's you know yeah, yeah. this is yeah. this is joy to me too i mean why do i keep doing it i've been doing this for two years now you know it's i did i started you are able video series in march 2019 it's because i enjoy learning from people yeah. i enjoy human stories i enjoy talking to people and I do not feel discouraged or encouraged based on the number of viewers. Of course, who doesn't want millions of viewers? Of course, who doesn't want millions of dollars? And I mean, US dollars, not Thai bots in the account. But I still do it. You know, like I still continue to do it. And this is joy to me to talk to you, yeah. to um, connect as human beings, to yeah. just share. I, I, to me, this is really fun. Like this is really yeah. fun, and it's it's like it's work too, in a way. It's it's work. It's fun. It's like personal, and like everything to me is just comes together, and and I enjoy. Yeah, I enjoy this right now. So this is like wonderful. Oh, that's great! It's so great, and that's also something to be grateful and joyful about is that you found a purpose that does bring you joy. And I think when we all kind of align to our life's purpose and. There is so much joy to be found in those in those interactions, you know, and it's right. again, it's it's great. It's great how you can incorporate that and you can recognize it, too. I guess it's also recognizing what brings you that joy, you know. Right. So um, before we end, I would like mm -hmm. to ask if there's any questions from the audience and also Mika, I would like you to maybe share something that you feel uh, it doesn't have to be anything specific. It could be advice it could be just a statement it could be a quote it could be a story uh, it could be how people can reach out to you what would you like to share to the audience right now i guess i i would like to encourage all the audience to just find actively seek out one thing in their daily routine that brings them joy or make it make something about their daily routine more joyful. So I guess for mm -hmm. me, it's like turning, turning a routine into somehow a ritual, you know, uh -huh. something that you have to do, but make it so that you enjoy it. You know, whether it's brushing your teeth and singing a song or like listening to a song <laughs> or you know, whether it's, you know, when you have your morning coffee, like how do you, how do you have it? Do you sip in reverence? Um, do you enjoy the quiet? Do you sit outside in nature? So yeah, I guess I'm, I'm curious to hear how other people are cultivating their, their joy yeah. and turning routines into rituals. I guess that's my, that's my key takeaway. How do you turn your routine into a ritual to create more joy? You know, what are the things that you're doing, you know, to, and yeah, cause I, I, I'm curious. I want to know what everyone else is doing and it could be something so small, but like, it's often, again, the small things that spark them the most joy. So I'm curious to hear what people do. And yeah, you can, um, I don't know, you can find me on an Instagram or on Facebook and then just, or post it here. And then maybe we can read them together and then we can all try them and spark more joy across everyone's daily lives, I guess. And it's, yeah, again, it's just simple things. So, yeah. Great way to promote action. I will definitely like reshare this post and then, you know, ask people what sparks your joy and how do you turn your small moments into rituals? And um, before we end, I would like to answer this particular question. And um, that is, I do yoga. I found that yoga is a great way for me to keep fit and meditate while I am learning how to breathe as well mm. and it balances every aspect of my life um and i love it it's so it's wonderful it's so wonderful and uh, that's my little thing that i did for i started like eight and a half years ago and then it became 
very serious last four years. So it's definitely a ritual now. And I get up in the morning, I, you know, do my brushing my teeth and things, no shower and mm -hmm. uh, put on my yoga clothes, take my kids to school. And then I go to yoga. Like that's my ritual. And then after that I work. And then, so definitely is a ritual. And I definitely want to hear what the audience have to say about that as well. So we have gone over the time, which <laughs> is always the case. <laughs> uh, because half an hour is just not enough to to share, you know, so much that we want to share. And uh, Mika, thank you so much. Thank you thank so you much for your time. time. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed talking with you as always. You're also a very deep thinker and, and there's a self-awareness there and uh, curiosity that I find also very inspiring. So thank you thank you thank you very much uh what is the name of your instagram or your facebook where people can find sorry i've got a call coming through <laughs> um, you reach me Time um, to the <laughs> i know sorry i thought i put all things on do not disturb um you can reach me at mika wasanar um so it's mimi and coco on instagram and then Maybe also, coco. my pajama brand is called siamese dreams but it's uh siamese dreams official on Instagram. So yeah, okay. check us out if you want to find joyful pajamas. <laughs> awesome. Um, Michael Taylor just said, stay in a home a lot during the pandemic. I tend to wear old clothes at home because no one can see me while watching this. I out on a nice t-shirt. <laughs> thanks, Michael, for sharing and thanks for supporting. Sorry? Exactly. It's not about, it, you know, sometimes people think you wear clothes for other people, but Actually, I wear clothes for my own personal joy. Yeah. You know, and I think that's yeah. important. Even if not there, you should feel good. You should, you know, yes. you should look good. And, and 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 everything has an energy to it, you know, even inanimate objects. And I think it was right. Mary Kondo who was like, if you're clearing out your closet, you know, you have to hold the object or the clothing and you ask yourself, does this bring me joy? And if it does, keep it. And if it doesn't, you, you know, pass it on, you recycle it or you donate it. And I was like, right. yeah, that's really cool. So all the things in your home should bring you joy or purpose, right? Yeah. 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 I, I never thought about asking um, <laughs> because, because I don't have any junk in my house. Like I'm not somebody who collect things. Um, yeah. So everything in my house has its purpose. Uh, but I'm definitely not as you, you are very artistic in, in your aspect and, and I'm artistic in like, I don't know, communication you, arts. I, I think know. it's yeah, a different, you, yeah. yeah different kind of uh, seeking perfection in the words that I use. <laughs> yeah, but that's an, it's, that's an art too. And maybe you, it's a collection of words for you that can bring you yeah. joy, you know, or yeah. poems or things that move you. And maybe it's printing yeah. them out and framing them. And there's, you know, that, that can incite more joy for you. Oh, that's a very nice idea. Very nice idea. I never thought of, about that, but I like, I like poems and I like, writing and like diary and all that stuff. But anyways, all right, we're going to have this chat privately. So I'm going to end the prod broadcast very soon. And uh, thank you to the people who are watching, especially Michael Taylor and uh, the other people who did not comment. I don't know who you are, but thank you so much for watching, whether you're on LinkedIn, on Facebook. And um, please do follow um, me if you haven't yet. So thank you very much. And if you are looking to be a guest on my show, please contact me as well, because I'm looking for doing a third series starting next month, but I'm specifically looking for people who are brave enough to share their spiritual experiences, okay? So if you have spiritual experiences, uh, growth in self-awareness, consciousness, if you have sixth sense, whatever, you know, things that are in that realm, I will be the platform to have very, very brave people to share these experiences um, because I believe that we are all heading towards uh, awakening and not be stuck in the level of uh, the stage of ego. So if you're interested in being a guest in my third series, I am looking for guests at the moment and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Mika. Thank you to Thank everybody you. for watching. Car Car Carol. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Bye.